Great day, everyone, and welcome to our Building You Now podcast. I'm going to do different real quick. Do anybody like snakes out there? Hi, <laughs> Paul. Okay, listen, I, I want to start that off a little different. I don't like snakes. I want to start the podcast off a little different because, you know, we this month, Muslim Money and I have been jumping on these questions, these two questions, biblical questions we believe that should be answered or just some thought, some thought-provoking question that we've been using, and it has really been helpful. We got great feedback, and so we want to continue that path today. Again, I'm Dr. Levi Rosier. This is Middle of the Month Golden, and we're going to bring you two questions today. Continue this path on our Beauty Not uh, podcast. Some thought-provoking questions, some questions that people may have had about the Bible. We can't take it all. We can't be exhausted. But we do want to take our time and just get two of them today. So let's pray real quick. God, we thank you for your presence, your power, your anointing, your love toward us that fails not. May what we say be moved by the spirit of living God. We submit to you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I want to encourage you guys to share this page with someone. These questions, I think they've been really helpful um with, with those we've been talking to about these these um part this podcast because we just we kind of changed it up a little bit um Mr. Lamont, um i did it on purpose about the snake and i don't like snakes at mm-hmm. all i probably it, the best snake for me is a dead snake so <laughs> you guys are fans of snakes out there you can have them but i'm i did that because that's gonna be one of our questions today right. about one of the things happening in the old testament that sometimes get people make people mind go tilt but I think it's worth asking that question about um, the snake in the Bible. So could you mind asking that question to, our, uh, to kind of get us, uh, get us going? Yeah, okay. So why did God tell Moses to make an image of a snake and place it on a pole for people to look at to be healed? That's, that's different. Now, this is based off of Numbers 21, 8 through 9. I'll read that one more time. Why did God tell <laughs> Moses to make an image of a snake and place it on a pole for the people to look at to be healed. That's something. Now you know the average the average Sunday school person going they about notice the answer about back. I would think because they talk, talk they were taught this, uh, but now we're gonna go a little deeper in this conversation because why would God? I like how you said that. Why would God? Because the Bible said God sent those serpents. Right. Though God sent those serpents to to bite them, and some died. Some uh, died. Right. Let's, let's give y'all a bite drop. They had just people. God, people had just came out of captivity. They had been in captivity a long time. They had been in slavery, and God had freed them, rescued them through Moses' leadership. On their way in the wilderness, God had done a lot of amazing things for them in the wilderness, and then they get to a place. <clears throat> excuse me, and they start complaining. They start um, because every time God did something for them, they complain again. They right. murmured again, yep. and they find themselves in a place where their uh, God, our God, your God and my God, has become upset with them. And so the Bible says, it says in the Bible that he, he sent snakes in there mm-hmm. and had the snake bite the people. And then the people said, Moses, pray for us. Intercede for us because that this can stop. And so God, Moses prays, and then God tell Moses, build, take a, a, a image, and put the snake on a pole, and have the people look at the pole that they may be healed. Now, what did that speak to us today? And I got a whole lot of questions in my head wow. about that conversation now, yeah. about my God who I love so much. Why would God that love people so much allow snakes to kill people? Now, I got a whole lot in my head that I got to ask God when I get there, but what did that speak to us today? Yeah, that, uh, okay, so snakes. First off, I like when you're looking at snakes, it's like in healing, <laughs> snakes and healing, it's like they don't, they don't go hand in hand. No, they don't go hand in hand. They, they typically don't go hand in hand. All right. So, but they had to, what they had to do was uh, Moses created this image. All right. He put it on this, it was a, a bronze image, and he put this image of this poisonous snake on a pole okay. that they were to look at to be healed. Now, Typically, you know, when we think of snakes and we think of poison, we think of death. Correct. But what research and what we've done, we've, we have found that in order to create an antidote Correct. 
for what the snake does, that poison that they put in you, you know what we have to use? I know. Go ahead. We have to use that very poison <laughs> as the base in order to have the reverse antidote it. and Correct. to reverse it. Correct. Right? Correct. That's because correct. what we want to do... Whatever the poison is doing, how it's causing your blood to clump up and your organs to do this, we want to cause your blood to not clump up and for your body to do that. Man, you got you a scientist. This is, this is a smart man. I got to beside me. Y'all forgive me. I got a smart man here. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead Wait, but, sna but snakes naturally, it's like if you look at them, well, this is where the poison, this is where the danger came in the first place. But... If you look at in, in a global sense, God was meeting them where, where they, they were. were. So where the, so the real poison we know was in the snake, but the poison started in their complaining. That's right. It started in their their complaining about what God had did. The, listen, you and I got, are on our way somewhere. We're headed to the ultimate promised land. God's people had came out of captivity. He's telling him, I'm taking y'all to the promised land. Moses is going to take them to the promise on their way to the promised land. God is moving things out their way, making things happen for them. And through all of that, they're complaining. Right. That's poison. Right. Poisonous spirit is complaining spirit. You complain about this. You're not appreciative of that. You complain about that. You So you, you're... God may be sending the snake, but you're creating the atmosphere for it. That's right. You're creating an atmosphere for a, a snake to get in. You're creating an atmosphere for gossip to come in. You're creating an atmosphere for pain to come in. You're creating an atmosphere for stuff to come in that really shouldn't be in there, but you're creating this atmosphere. And now God said, clear Moses, take the very thing, the very thing, that the very the, the, the very thing that's killing them now take it and make an image, and I need them to get the way to get this poison out of them is take their obedience and look at that image, and then what you just said mm -hmm. he took what they were doing <laughs> right. and said put it on a pole and look get their eyes off their situation and look at that and now you'll be healed and we get it the healing was not in the snake. We got it. We understand that. The healing was not in the pole, but the healing was in the obedience to look at it. Moses was obedient, obedient, and they were obedient because you and I both get our eyes off the promise. That's right. We do. We do it today. We get our eyes off what God said they were going to do because sometimes the promise is not coming fast enough. Not, and because it's not coming fast enough, we complain. That's right. We murmur. It's not moving fast. But the thing about God is, he is the promiser. Your promise may not be there yet, but you got the promiser. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You got the promiser. So he said, lift up this pole and look at it and that you may be healed. Now, fast forward. We asked this question in one of my, one of my podcasts about, was the Bible still relevant today in the 21st century? And I think every question we're, we're talking about is moving us back to that first question. Jesus said in three in John 3, 14, he said, just like the serpent was put on a pole, I, the son of man, must be put on. What God was doing then was bringing through redemption. Right. Oh, my goodness. God is smooth. That Bible is so smooth. He's bringing mankind back to himself. Mm -hmm. So it's just like the son of the, the, the snake was put on the pole. I am not going to die a death that I shouldn't die. Okay? I'm going to die a death. Watch this. I'm going to die a death that really you should be dying. That's right. Really, I'm going to put this snake up here on an image, on a pole. Old Testament. Go back to Old Testament. On a pole. But who should be dying is you. But the pole, I'll put a snake up here <laughs> on the image. So here we go, fast forward, fast forward, for the first century. Well, not 21st century, for us. Jesus now says, if I'm lifted up from the earth on this pole, I draw all men unto myself. All right, now, so today, me and you and I today, how do we lift up Jesus and how, why, is, why is it a fight to keep our eyes on Jesus? Man, it is, a, it is a fight. It is a fight to keep our eyes on Jesus because of the very many distractions mm. that we have. There is so much mm. opportunity in order to, to, to focus on 
what you don't, what you might not want to focus, but with the way people research things, you have people oh that gosh, get paid man. money in order to figure out what you're trying to think about or what you might think <laughs> oh, about. That's good. And if you got people, somebody that's looking and trying to figure out what you, you might need not even know that you're thinking about it. But it they're already thinking, thinking about, about it. it. And that's what they constantly and constantly do. And you have all of these potential distractions that can get you oh off my gosh. of focus. Oh my off goodness. of focus. Oh, my goodness. That's like the essence. I would say that maybe, oh that's, why, that maybe that's why God used a, a, a snake that's in good. the first place. That's good. Because think about it. You got people that are getting bit. I'm sure there's people that are hollering, That's they're, right. they're screaming. That's right. So what are they? What's causing the hollering That's and what's calling, causing the screaming? It's those snakes That's that right. are causing. Okay. Right. Well, since y'all are focused on these snakes right here, I'm gonna use this. That's good. And since you're already obeying by focusing on the snakes, you obey me now. That's good. Now look at this. That's this good. is what has to happen. This is what's going to get you to your deliverance. You have God that's meeting them but and meets are. us where we're at. Because guess what? Had we not needed Jesus to be lifted up on a pole for us to be redeemed, I promise you he never would have put his first and only begotten <laughs> son on there. This was not his first choice of things to do. It was because of the state that we, that were, in. we were in. And the only way that we could get around that is for God to meet us where we are, where we are which involved Jesus oh, man, being that's good. uplifted. That's good. That's good. That's good. Pole. And so sin is still trying to poison life today. It's yeah. still a poison that's been a today. It is. Complaining is going to poison. All this stuff that's against life is poison. We, we tend to forget what God has done for us. So we use this question today about this historical question about God taking allowing the snakes to bite his own people that they may focus on him. Now today in the 21st century, life is biting all of us too. Right. It's still hitting us. Some, some, some environments we're creating ourselves. And Jesus is telling us, he's telling us in the scripture, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. If I be, if you keep your eyes on me, all these distractions are coming. You're headed somewhere in God. You're headed somewhere in your, in, your, in your faith. God has promised you something. God has told your family something. But the complaining will cause pause in this to come. And all of us have to, have to get our eyes back on the prize, which is Jesus Christ. And he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw. I will I, I do all the drawing. And remember, he, the promiser promised you and I something. Amen. I mean, if... If I if he, if I promise that my mom promised to make me a cake, she's the one gonna make it. That's right. <laughs> uh, so uh, and I may have to wait a little bit, take my time with on it, but uh, but I'm not gonna make. I'm not gonna talk about my mom in the process. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be off. Try, and, and I promise you, it's gonna take all I got not to go next door try to do something else while she's baking the cake. And I'm like, oh, uh, and said, so, uh, keep your eyes on the maker. Right. Keep your eye on the one that's, is, that's that's working things out for your good. Which the uh, Muslim one lead us into our second question for the day? Right. You now, and, and, and I like what 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 uh, what uh, we asked in in, in um, Philippians two says. How do you work out your own salvation? When the Bible says work out your own salvation, what do it mean? Now we understand the Old Testament when they say at the cross. The, 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 the serpent, we understand that pictorial view, which was ugly. Now, I can stand up for a whole month and say, God, I don't understand why God will allow snake to kill his people. I just right. don't understand that. Don't make sense to me. My brain go tilt when I think about it. Mm -hmm. But I also understand that he is the promiser. He is the redeemer. His whole goal is to get me to him. That's right. All right? Mm -hmm. To get him to, to, to back to myself. So, back to him. So, now we got Jesus. Who is the our who is the, our, our our redeemer? Who love us that get us back to Christ to God Himself. Mm -hmm. Now that we are saved, let's say you say everybody say. Mm -hmm. What does the Bible mean though in Philippians two? I think it's Philippians two, mm -hmm. where it says um, two twelve thirteen. Two, 12, 13. Uh -huh. Paul says, "Work out your own salvation." That's our second question for the day. What do the Bible mean? Work out your own salvation. When I don't have to work to be saved. What does that mean? Okay. All right. Amen. Amen. There's a, um, 
salvation has to be uh, uh, when you get saved. Mm -hmm. When you get saved, you need uh, you need to be inspired to be saved. Okay. Right? Okay. All right. You need you're inspired when you are saved because I got you. something moves you. Okay. God touches you. You're inspired. And you're to be drawing saved. to right. You're drawing. But to. you need information to stay saved. All right now. You need information. You need ways to do things differently in order for my mind to, con regardless of the circumstances mm -hmm. that are coming in, okay. I still know that I am saved. All right. Now, you say, I, I want to ca capture what you said. Uh, I want to I want to kind of rephrase that where I could. Um, that's, that you meant it differently. Now, now that I am, I did nothing. You you say, here is, here is. Here is this job. Here is something I didn't work for. It's mine. You did nothing to work for it. We're giving it to you. All right. But the purpose of this is to be fruitful. Right. <laughs> the purpose of it is to live it out. That's all right? right. You just cannot just get it. You just sit on it. Right. The goal is because you 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 got it, but you still you are still your when I put it in your hand, you still was a liar. That's right. When I put it in your hand, you still were maybe struggling sexually. When I put it in your hand, you still were doing things you shouldn't be doing. So you got it based on what he did, but you don't, don't deserve it. So what you must do now is work out what you already called to be. So you'll become fruitful. Right. <laughs> You're becoming something that you already are. Mm -hmm. So I'm going with that. Yes. And so now as I work out my salvation, I'm still becoming back to that image of God. I'm still looking out to, to be like be like my father, my savior. So in essence, so, so I, I want to catch that word you said to stay saved as much as as I am saved, I am to become fruitful in my salvation. Right. Ooh, man, yeah. I want to preach so bad I won't, though. Yeah, yeah, I got you. That word fruitful. That fruitful, fruitful. actualization, that actualization of right. it. The continual process of folks like, you know, I'm saved. Yes, I'm saved, but I'm still working out my salvation. That's right. I'm still, I, that's something I got to do. Mm -hmm. I can't just be, get saved and say, you know, I'm just gonna hope I'm start lying one day. There's some things I gotta do. Right. There's some things I gotta let Holy Spirit grab me. I'm thinking I gotta put work in. I gotta I gotta be in prayer. I gotta get in the Word of God. I gotta go to work. And as life hit me, I gotta use those tools I got now to work out my salvation. You know, you now we we, we look at those snakes back then, but those snakes also caused them to look there. See, yep. I'm going with that? Exactly. And so our salvation, as much as we know we are saved, I know I'm saved, but just being saved, that's not the only thing. God God wants me to live and to, and to look more like him. That's right. So that requires me doing something. You know, one, I, one of the dangers about having, I, you know, um, 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 not dance to word danger, but um, my degree in, 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 in theology and that kind of stuff it's academia. I get it. It's the academia. That's slowing down, unpacking things. But that's a whole different beast between academia and devotion. That's right. You know, when you when you're devoted to something, I don't, <laughs> the, the book may not make sense to me, mm -hmm. but I love him so much. I want to become like him. That's 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 really good. See, when you're that's devoted great. to something, I'm now I'm not just reading no more just to be head for head knowledge. That's mm -hmm. academia. Mm -hmm. I'm just reading. No, when mm -hmm. I read the Bible now. Mm -hmm. I become devoted to it. Right. And I want to figure out, Lord, how can, I, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet with my love for people. So God, I want to become that. Mm -hmm. So help me become that. That's now working out mm -hmm. my salvation. You can't just go in the gym and say, oh, I'm in the gym now. I'm, I'm healthy. Mm -hmm. No. No. You better uh -uh. work out. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you, 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 it's like the uh, everybody has 600 some odd muscles. Everybody has the same number of uh, muscles, but if you can look at uh, one person, you can tell, like, you can look at, uh, like, if you have two different people, you can probably look and you can infer, like, well, this is what this person has been doing for their <laughs> muscles. This is what this person hasn't been doing mm -hmm. for their muscles. This is what this person does, might do as far as exercise, or this is what... This person might not exercise. So that's the result of you going to the gym then. Right. So you're, you, you, you see, you, he, like, I, I'm pray, pray for me. He look like he go to the gym. <laughs> he look like he goes. So that's the result of you working out. Right. Ooh, 
right. see, that's, that's, the work at our salvation, mm-hmm. fruit must come out. And people say stuff like, you know, I'm I'm saved, but I live like I want to live. That is not, that's no work out mean you become fruitful. Right. My life begin to look like what I say I am. When people say I am saved, but look different, you're not working out. Right. You're just exactly. not working out. You just... Just want this, want this, want the name that you say, and we're here to help you with your question. We, listen, we're not, listen, we're not, that's not no condemnation. We're having an honest conversation. Why is this hard for people? Right. Why do this become hard sometimes, Mr. Mont, for people okay with just being saved and say they got their ticket to heaven, but don't want to work out? I don't really think people, the, I think the issue is, is they don't look at their spiritual life like they look at their natural life. Right and what I'm us. saying, right saying like us. that is like, you can have a banana. Okay. Like if I have a banana and I can have one, one banana that I just got from the uh, grocery store, and then I can get a, a same uh, banana that has been in the heat for three days and I can put them both on the uh, counter. Now, I'm going to know to eat the one that's just come out of the grocery store without you even telling me. Okay. Because of what I see, because of what I, I smell, and because of the environment oh, that both of those have been into. That's good. If people would start looking at their spiritual lives in that same way, like, I know I can't leave this banana out <laughs> in, the, in the car for three days. Because if I leave this banana in the car for three days and then I try and eat it, it's going to kill me. So what would have actually sustained me and been good for me is now going to kill me. Our spiritual lives, we, we, we need to at All least right. try and look at those the same way. I got to watch the environment that I put this banana That's in. That's good. This banana right here, I can't let it sit for five days. It's got, I gotta, it's got to be fresh because I got to go back. I'm going to have to go get some more fresh ba- bananas and bananas that have been Placed in the right proper in the environment. environment. In the same way, you can't expect, I wouldn't expect for a banana to grow <laughs> right if I was in Antarctica because it's too cold to be there. So you want it to be fruitful, you want it to be fresh, you want it to be something to be useful. Fruitful, it's going to take a lot of work, work. because fruit has to be cultivated. Fruit, fruitful, That's good. you should think full of work. That's it's going to be full of co- cultivation, full of watching. Have I put enough of this? I do, do I need to be around that? Should I be around more of this? And here's the thing about it. The God is, the, the God, the God, the God, the Holy Spirit is the one that can produce it because you're putting yourself in position to be produced, to producing. Right. So I'm going with that. Exactly. You're putting yourself in environments to be you, you know, be glorified God. You know, it's like get, getting a job. You don't want to just get a job, get a job. You want to grow in that job. You want to right. be better in that job. You want yeah. to be, you know, you're, you're, you're not my marriage. I don't want this. My, not why, my wife would be sad today if all we did is walk down the aisle. Like, okay, I got it now. I'm going home and chill. No more. Nothing. No, nothing. Nothing. This married to me now. No. Right. I must become fruitful in my marriage. That's like you right. said, pragmatically. Spiritual things the same way. When he said work at our soul salvation, he means we must put some action to it. Become right. more devoted to God. Mm-hmm. I, listen, this, this is this. Is, I ask that question: Why is it hard sometimes? Because we are distracted. Mm-hmm. We don't. We sometimes we we are uh, we like the things of God, but not devoted to God. We like the things of God, but not devoted to God. The, right. the children of Israel wanted the things of God, right. but not devoted to God. Mm-hmm. And so God sent the snakes in. They bit him. He like that's why Jesus come now and say, "If I be lifted up, I draw all men unto myself." Listen, these two questions today, go back and look at them, the numbers, or number 21. Go back and look in Philippians 2. That whole that whole book of Philippians is like when Paul said to Philippians church, you know, God is 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 working to, for his will to be accomplished in your life. Right. He's working for his will to be accomplished in your life. Well, are you putting yourself in position to work out your soul salvation? There's some things that God be worked out of me. I'm just being honest. I don't care. I look up and say, there's some stuff still in me. That's got to be worked out of me because life start working stuff in me. Pain works stuff in me. Mm-hmm. Stuff I've been through, stuff I've seen, even successes can make you be prideful, work in you, that you must work that stuff out of you by the Holy Spirit. So we're praying today that these two questions, these two questions, one, the first question would require us to get our eyes back on Christ, the promise, sir. The second question will hope us, God grace us, to really work out our soul salvation, that that stuff may work out of us and he may work in through us, that we may become fruitful 
in the name of Jesus. Man, I hope Amen. these questions help. They help me. Oh, Just talking about me. <laughs> yeah, definitely help me. Amen. Listen, God, I hope these two questions help you guys today. I'm helping all of us. We're sharing a dialogue. Well, you must not keep this to yourself. Share it with someone. Pray for us as we dialogue. Give us feedback on the feed. And let us know that how, how you're feeling about these questions. And let's have a conversation uh, later on um, next week. We'll come back and give you two more good questions about the Bible that we just think are rhetorical, hot right now. And we believe God's going to bless you real good. Listen, I'm Dr. Levi Rose, the immense Lamont Golden. We are so excited about these, 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 these questions. But I pray God blesses you. Thank you for tuning in and joining our Build It You Now podcast. I love you and hope to see you soon.